world-class championship wrestling, but uh, he also hosted a very interesting interview segment. And week after week, the Boston bad boy would, well, I suppose we should say he spewed because that's exactly what he did. And in this particular classic interview we're going to take a look at, it's a rumble seat with the legendary Dory Funk Jr. Unbelievable. I can't wait to take a look at this myself, Brian. All right. It took place in the Bahamas back in 1990. It's vintage Boston bad boy Tony Rumble and the NWA wrestling legend Dory Funk Jr. Yo, 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 yo. This be the BBB. And this week, like no other time in professional wrestling, have I had such an honored guest as this week. And my guest this week is legendary. They can take him from A to Z. And you ain't going to come up with anybody that compares to my guest. And that guest is none other than Dory Funk Jr. It's a pleasure to have you here, Mr. Funk. Well, thank you very much. And I want to I thank you for asking me to come, uh, to come into your rumble seat. And well, uh, it, it's my pleasure to be here. I know that you manage a great wrestler and Tony Atlas. He's got a tremendous background, and uh, well, listen. Now that you touched on that subject, first of all, it's my pleasure to have someone of your caliber. But now you talk about now. I know you've held world titles. You and your brother were the first two brothers to ever hold world titles. Actually, is that correct? The first brother combination ever to uh, individually hold the world heavyweight championship belt. That's true. An unbelievable feat. I, and I know a lot of the wrestling fans. There's a lot of brother combinations. And actually, in the IWCCW, we had Vic Steamboat, who is brother Ricky Steamboat, held the prestigious NWA title that you held. Right. Right. Now, I have to ask this, and I don't want you to think I'm really being a rotten individual, because I really am, but I, want, I have to ask this. Now, how do you compare wrestling of your day, and I know you're still active somewhat, but I mean, in your heyday, now, as a kid, now, I got to tell you this. I saw you wrestle Carlos Colon, and that's Carlitos Colon for all them Puerto Ricans out there in a one-hour time limit in, in, I think it was, the Portland Expo Center, and I know you did it more than once. Now, how do you rate the, the, the competition of your day to today's wrestlers? Well, I'm going to be as honest as I can about that. I think the further along we go, the better training methods that we have, uh, the better nutrition, uh, the, and it should be on your part too. The managers should take better and better care of the professional athletes. I think all professional athletes of today are a little better than the athletes of the past. But before I go any further, I pride myself on staying in condition, staying up with the latest oh, training, it shows. training methods, and uh, I really believe that uh, I can stick right in there with, uh, with any of the great wrestlers today. But I do have to give them this. Uh, the athletes are better. Training methods are better, nutrition is better, and as a whole, I would say the athletes of today are better than the ones of the past. Wow, now that, I think there's no question about there's that. No, I have to be you, honest about that. Yeah. Wow, now you see, now, now it's first. been said before in other sports too, but you know, it's still wrestling. It's all the same, you know what I mean? It's like in football, it's bigger, faster, stronger. Baseball, the guys are hitting the ball farther. True. I mean, basketball, they're jumping to the moon. Look at a kid like Michael Jordan now compared to a Bob Cousy. They play the same position. Now, I. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something that's kind of outrageous. It's like, I, I don't think like in your day you had a muscle man like an Atlas. Is that correct? Was there anyone of that type of uh, caliber? I would have to say that there was not a man that looked and had the athletic skills that Tony Atlas has. I've got to say that uh, he's a tremendous athlete. I would like to add just one other little thing though. I would like myself, because I'm, an, I'm a competitor, and I like to try myself against other people, I'd like to give it a shot at Tony Atlas for his championship belt. But I'd only like well, to ask one thing. I really don't, and I, I'm going to be honest with you, because you... Yeah, well, I, I'm an honest individual. Yeah, well, tell I tell it like I it really, is, week really in and week out on a rumble seat. really don't want to walk in the ring with Tony Atlas knowing that a slimy little rat like you might be standing on the outside ready to take a uh, foreign object and pass it to Tony Atlas or a hard hat off and hit somebody over the head. Uh, a see, slimy could, little rat? Yeah, slimy Coming from you, Dad, I, I appreciate I mean, you don't understand. See, despicable is my middle name, Mr. Funk. Right. And calling me a slimy little rat is like, you know, 
I'm, I'm thrilled. I really appreciate that I because... I think of lots more names to call you, but since this is television... On that level? I'll forgo that. Oh, yes. Slimy I mean, little rat is... You I know, could do a better job of it. You think? Well, can you... Could you... Where are you going? Where are you going? A slimy... Uh, well, you heard it right there. He told it like it is. The BBB is a slimy little rat. And no matter what you do, no matter where you go, be bad and remember one thing more. The BBB and the Brotherhood ain't having fun, Jack. So they got a call, 911. Later. All right, so even with a wrestling legend like Dory Funk Jr., the Boston bad boy Tony Rumble certainly was never at a loss for words. That uh, particular interview segment, the Rumble seat, uh, taking place in the box.